Hi everyone, I'm Jack, the Chief Women's Football Reporter at The Mirror. Um, and I just wanted to use this video to speak in a little bit more detail about a story I've written earlier this week um, on the WSL's plans and ambitions to become a £1 billion league in terms of revenue uh, by the end of the decade. That's the target that's been set out by the league's chair, Dawn Airy. Um, now, last week, myself and a few other select reporters who cover the league uh, were able to listen to both Dawn and Sue, Baroness Sue Campbell, who's the outgoing uh, FA Director of Women's Football. Um, and they sort of went into some of their plans uh, and details on the league for the next few years. Um, at the end of this season, the current broadcast deal is up um, and that will be negotiated in the coming months. Uh, a new a new broadcast deal for the league. Um, but also the FA want to hand control of both the WSL and the championship, the second tier in English women's football, um, over to Nuco, um, the, the, the name for the company they're, they're calling, um, which will be responsible for, for running the leagues and growing them both commercially over the coming years. So this has led me to think where perhaps I could see the league going over the next few years and, and looking ahead. Um, I think, firstly, flexible kickoff times that, that suit the needs of the broadcaster and, and having every game available to be streamed, perhaps via just one broadcaster, I think could be something we could definitely see that would help uh, help maximise the league's potential audience over the next few years. Um, I think that will also help the game perhaps further step out of the men's shadow and running to, to the men's Premier League and, and EFL schedule. I think sort of the further they can move away from that, that might be helpful. Um, I think we'll also see a more expanded league in the future. Obviously, at the moment, we've got 12 teams. They play 22 league games a season um, and only one team gets relegated. And that, that can still provide, you know, it provides some great drama last season, some really fascinating stories at both ends of the table. But I think going forward, there's, there's so many clubs now further down the pyramid that are professionalising, wanting to get into that top tier. Um, and I think with the FA then moving the power over to, to Newco, I think it's almost inevitable that we see an expanded WSL at some point down the line. I have to stress this is just my personal opinion at the moment rather than anything concrete, but I can certainly see that, that a, a more competitive league with more teams, perhaps a playoff system or, or some, some reward for finishing fourth and fifth, uh, maybe a playoff for the European spots, I think that that's definitely something we could see because that'll only, you know, make the league more attractive to broadcasters and, and help grow the audience going forward. Um, and I think that's definitely something we could see going forward. Um, hopefully as well, more games, even from last season, even more games being played in the main stadia of teams. I know Arsenal have, have committed to, to another five games at the Emirates this season, but... I think in sort of three or four years time, we'll see all the top clubs playing at least five or six games in that ma their main stadia, um, which again will only help attendances grow and, uh, and interest in the league continue to boom, which is at the end of the day is, is what we all want, those of us connected with the women's game. Um, if you want to read more on this topic, then head to our women's football page at The Mirror um, and you can check out a couple of pieces I've written already on this subject with more to come over the following weeks ahead of the start of the new WSL season that starts on October the 1st.